<laughs> the funny thing is, I was about ready to put away this microphone, and then I realized, oh crap, I haven't recorded for the YouTube video yet, so let's do that now. And then my air conditioning decided to kick on, but I'm not going to edit this audio, and I'm not turning the AC off. Just deal. So a lot has happened in the last week since I last spoke with y'all. For one, I do not work at the dollar store anymore. Uh, long story short, bad management practices. That's all I'm going to say about that for now. If you really want to ask for more details about it, I might post about it on Discord if you ask. Um... If you want to join the Discord, uh, sign up for my email newsletter. Head to kelseydcrawford.com, link in the description, and sign up for my email newsletter. That will get you a Discord link. I'm mostly keeping it to newsletter subscribers for now, because by doing that, I'm hoping to weed out the bad actors in that way. Um, the Discord server is like public, but also not public. Like, right now I'm keeping it to email newsletter peeps only for the time being. Um, there are some other safety tools that I gotta put in place before I can start publish publishing the link on YouTube. Mostly because I've seen YouTube comments, I have filtered them, I have deleted a lot of the really bad ones, and I've had to ban channels from commenting on my videos because of some really bad actors. So, in the interest of, you know, public safety, <laughs> I'm keeping the Discord to only newsletter subscribers for right now. I've actually been joining a couple of different Discord servers since last I spoke with y'all. I, I know I'm on the Heatsink Comics Collective, and I'm an exec member of the Columbus Cartoon Coalition, so of course I'm on there. I also run my own server, Fantasyville, and there's actually a smaller Discord server that I've been running, but that's for like a secret project, so I'm not going to talk about that quite yet. Um, and then I just recently joined a server to partake in what's called Zero Draft July. Zero Draft July is a comics challenge or comics practice, not so much a challenge, but a practice to draft a story from zero during the month of July. And there are like get togethers, virtual get togethers over Discord to work on your zero draft. I'm taking it as a chance to finally draft ahead of schedule for The Legend of Jamie Roberts, because right now the script is at chapter 12. Uh, so I want to try to get chapter 12's script done all the way into chapter 13 and ideally 14. I would love to get into chapter 14. I actually have some notes for this particular section. Um, I feel like ever since I participated in the Comic Book Jamboree's 24-hour comic challenge, one of the bits of feedback that I got from them was the comic that I submitted, they felt like the middle dragged a bit, and now I'm paranoid that any comic project I work on, the middle drags. <laughs> um, so I'm trying really hard not to have this section of The Legend of Jamie Roberts feel like it's dragging. I am trying really hard to not have that happen. Like I want the I want the visual storytelling to do a lot of the heavy lifting, but I also don't want the reader to feel bored. So it's a juggling act. Um, so you know, there's a peak of the psychology there. <laughs> um, Legend of Jamie Roberts still going well. I'm looking to get Vanita and the Demon King off hiatus soon. Knock on wood by next week. Um, if you're on the email newsletter, you'll be the first to see updates because it started as a newsletter exclusive webcomic. Uh, kind of like New Punk Signal in that regard, which New Punk Signal is wrapping up this week. Um, I'm hoping to get it up on Kickstarter in August. 
I would do July, but Canyon Wright Productions is looking to launch a Kickstarter in the middle of July, and I want to try to not have it overlap too, too much. I've run multiple Kickstarter campaigns at the same time before. I don't want to repeat that experience because it's super stressful. <laughs> um, so keep an eye out for uh, news about Canon Wright Productions uh, comics anthology that will be coming on Kickstarter pretty soon. It's all about robots it's called the universal flaws of robotics. There's, this is the biggest comics anthology project that they've put together to date. There's over 19 individual artists who have contributed to this project, which is exciting, but it also means our base asking goal is higher than the previous Kickstarter campaigns. So any support would be hugely appreciated. Um, again, sign up for my email newsletter if you would like to stay up to date on how that project is going. Also, I'm going to throw this out there too. There will be some teasers for a book that will be coming out hopefully soon from me this month. Um, this book I'm looking to release this month will not be crowdfunded because, knock on wood, hopefully everything clears, the Toledo Arts Commission gave me a grant, an accelerator grant, to help get this book launched. It's called Fuishishi. I know that might be a bit of a tongue twister, but there's a reason why it has this name. Fuishishi is actually a novella. It's not a comics project. It's a prose project. It's written word. Like, I'm actually looking to make a independently produced audiobook version of it. Uh, which I'm hoping that the grant can help fund even a little bit, but the grant will definitely help cover some of the behind the scenes costs, promotional costs, including bookmarks, and printing costs of the books themselves. That's if everything is kosher and everything clears. The last time that this Arts Commission reached out to me about a grant, um, they found out that my well, they double checked my address. And as soon as they double checked my address, they were like, oh, so you're technically not a Toledo native. We can't approve you for this other grant that you applied for, even though they told me that I had been accepted for it. I wrote a very angry white lady email about it. <laughs> so we've already had this discussion. Um, I, I pulled my inner Audrina rather than a Karen because I wanted to be civil with these folks, but I also wanted to express my disappointment and displeasure at how they handled that particular grant project. We have since resolved it. We have since come to terms with how to best move forward on things. And now it's actually looking like this will go through. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, that things will go through. Uh, once the funds actually arrive, that's when I'll start moving forward on stuff. I'm not moving forward on stuff until the money arrives because <laughs> I don't want to move forward on something just to be told no and then have to scramble to figure out how to get the funding. I've already had to do that with getting a printer. And now, thank you to Jessica because Jessica gave this huge donation that helped with getting a new printer in my home office. I now have a new printer. Uh, I have named her Carly Ray Epson because she is an Epson eco tank. <laughs> um, if I think to post a picture, I'll post a picture here, but I, I don't want to do too, too much video editing. Maybe I'll make a community post. We'll see. Um, one second. <sighs> Had to take a sip of water. Of course, it's seltzer water. Um, also, I'm seeing that the microphone is really picking up the, um, the air conditioning unit. One second. Okay. That probably did nothing, but... Mm, okay, back to normal. Um, anyways. 
yeah, some exciting things lined up in the next, like, month, month and a half. Because there's Canon Rights Anthology coming out in mid-July. There's Fuishishi, if the grant money comes in and it clears. And there's New Punk Signal, which will go crowdfunding in August. Uh, fingers crossed for that. And I'm also looking to get Vanita in the Demon King, another webcomic project off of hiatus. I had to put it on hiatus when I had taken up the job at the dollar store. But since I no longer work there, I might as well fill in my time with working on that webcomic project. <laughs> uh, webcomics are generally really good for filling in the time between gigs. <laughs> um, I've, I've been able to work on comics if not full-time, at least part-time for the last, like, decade, which, huzzah! Thank you to all of my patrons who helped make that possible. Um, I have their names listed in the video description. Um, and I also try to give them shout-outs at the end of videos. Um, and if you would like to help contribute, um, $3 a month gets you access to a special newsletter where I share behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, even more in-depth than these uh, videos. They're also just a good way to get some, like, bonus materials for when I do run uh, crowdfunding campaigns, like on Kickstarter. Members who give, like, at least $3 a month or more will get special rewards included in their reward packages if they back a Kickstarter campaign. That's exclusive for members. There's other rewards available, so if you're interested in that sort of thing, there's a, going to be a link down in the description to check out membership options, but it's ko-fi.com slash Kelsey D. Crawford, ko-fi.com slash Kelsey, that's K-E-L-C-I, D. Crawford. Again, link in the description if you're interested. So I actually have a timer going this time around <laughs> because I didn't want to repeat of a 45-minute dirge on social media <laughs> from last week. Um, I'll have a link to last week's video down in the description if you wanted to check that out. Or you can, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just click on my YouTube channel name and check it out that way. Um, yeah, I have a timer going. It's not just to keep me, like, within a certain time limit for these videos. It is also because I'm doing laundry. <laughs> um, and the timer is actually my laundry timer. So... With that, what else has been on my mind lately? Um, part of the reason I joined these Discord servers, uh, and I actually in I actually joined the Cartoonist Co-op recently. If you would like to find out more about the Cartoonist Co-op, I'll leave a link down in the description. I joined them recently because I've been looking for more groups, like advocacy groups, to join, and more workers groups to join. So Cartoonist Co-op fits the bill for me. And they're specifically for cartoonists and comic artists. So huzzah for that. And I've been talking with Creative Study. I'll have a link for them down in the description because I was part of their workshop about guaranteed income for artists, which they did fairly recently. Um, if you're curious about guaranteed income for artists, I'll have a link for that down in the description. It's a lot of advocacy work, but it's also something that I'm really passionate about and interested in, and I want to advocate for it. So it's, I've also been dipping into advocacy work because the political sphere is a mess. Anytime that I see that the political sphere is being way messier than usual, that's when I get really involved in political organizations. Uh, not just workers' rights groups or anything like that, but also making calls to my representatives and senators, signing up to send letters and postcards, um, and that sort of thing, but also working with groups like Indivisible and a few other like political groups that I'm now a part of. So it can be really easy to fall into despair 
But if there's any one thing that I feel like is true, it's something that I read in Business for Punks this morning. Because I'm rereading Business for, Business for Punks, which is actually a great book. I highly recommend that you get it, especially if you like know nothing about business. Because Business for Punks is written by one of the guys who helped fund BrewDog. Um, now, keep in mind that this book was written back in, like, late 2000s. I think it was, like, 2008. Um, so, when he talks about, like, crowdfunding, we're talking, like, the really early days of crowdfunding. Like, he... But anyway... Yeah, he writes a book called Business for Punks, and... Well, there are some things that have not aged super great, the general principles that he talks about are sound. And there is a segment where he talks about just doing it. Because you can plan, you can think about it, you can overthink about it, which is kind of my problem sometimes, is I am very prone to overthinking. I can't help it. Like, one of my strengths is being able to articulate my thoughts or at least liking to talk about my thoughts which is why this particular format of video really resonates with me but the problem is you can think yourself to death but you actually got to do it at the end of the day anything that is worth doing you got to do it like you can't think about doing it i just bang my finger like you can't think about doing things you got to actually do the thing because doing the thing means you're learning from it. And the more that you learn from a thing, the more that you can iterate off of it. Like, all right, I got to try this thing. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, well, now I know that this, this, and this does not work. Let's try this thing. Or, okay, I did a thing. Oh, it worked. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to move on to the next thing. Um... A lot of people have a lot of different opinions about, like, success and failure and which one's more valuable, and I'm not going to contribute to that conversation. The important thing is actually doing the thing. The important thing is actually, like, getting up off your butt and committing to something and then making that a regular practice. You can think about it, but thinking can only get you so far. It is not the same as doing. Which is part of the reason why I started making videos, because I was like, well, I gotta do it. And then by doing it, I learn what format works for me. I learn what kind of video editing works for me. And getting that audience feedback is like a plus. But it's also like, that's only part of the equation. It's not the only part of the equation. Um, and it's not even the biggest part, but it is part of it. Like, I'm glad that these videos are resonating with people. And I'm going to keep up this format for as long as it resonates with people. And honestly, I'm going to keep it up because it works for me. <laughs> um, like, yeah, sure, I have more time to devote to editing videos. But I like this format. <laughs> and I'm going to keep up this format. Maybe I'll up the number of videos that I post in a given week, but I don't necessarily feel the need to push that hard for it. Because there are some YouTubers who only post once a week. And they do just fine. Um, but this also makes me think about like the slot, the slot machine nature of social media platforms, which includes YouTube. I know I've said before I don't consider YouTube to be a social media platform, but it does have social media elements stapled onto its side. And that includes the numbers game and the whole slot machine idea of, okay, if I just do this thing and this thing and this thing, suddenly I'll have a million views. And that's not how that works. Sometimes you're just lucky. Um, maybe this is why I got a little bit irked with a recent hangout over discord with some creators on the columbus cartoon coalition i'm not going to drop names but there was one creator who was like oh yeah now i have seven thousand views and i'm like cool i'm glad it works for you i'm not doing it 
And he was like, well, you got to follow people because that's how you get your viewer count numbers up. And I'm like, cool, again, glad it works for you. I'm not participating in this machine. Again, not that keen on being part of the attention economy anymore because the attention economy just siphons away your literal attention, but it also siphons away your energy and prevents you from actually making money. And at this point, I need to make money to cover rent and groceries. That is more important to me than getting however many thousands of views on TikTok. And that's kind of the bonkers thing to think about is how people like Mercury Stardust are able to succeed. But Mercury Stardust did not succeed because she was on TikTok. She succeeded because... She's not just a trans person. She is a trans person showing how to do home repairs. And she wrote a book about how to do home repairs when you're renting a property. Like, her TikTok account isn't even the biggest part of how she makes money or how she was able to buy a house. She was able to buy a house because she got a book advance from a publisher. And there might be people out here listening to this being like, well, she got the book deal because she was on TikTok. And it's like, no, she got the book deal because she made a proposal for a book that was actually useful. That's how you get book deals. <laughs> Uh, particularly when you're writing nonfiction, is you pitch a book that is actually useful for people. That's how you make money. And making a book that is useful for people can look a lot of different ways, whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction. In nonfiction, it is super helpful to write a book that is actually useful for people. Like, hey, there's a lot of renters here in the United States and also internationally. Maybe we should have a book about how to do home repairs when you're renting a space <laughs> and what that would look like. And it's like, yeah, Mercury Stardust came up with this idea and I'm glad that she ran with it and I'm glad she made a book and I'm glad that it's been working out well. But it worked out well because that was a book niche that had not been filled up to this point. So I've also been thinking about this because of thinking of my book that I want to publish this month, Fushishi. Because it's, it's one of those book projects that I didn't anticipate it popping up at all. Um, but it was a story idea that came to me and I was like, I think it's worth putting in some energy. And then I made it. And um, now granted, there's only been like a handful of beta readers that I've sent this book out to. But the beta readers love this book. So I think it's got some legs. I think it's worth pursuing. And you'll be hearing more about it in the coming weeks. Um, probably next week, if things work out. Again, knock on wood. If things work out next week, you'll be hearing the first 10 or so pages of narration. It probably won't be the official like audiobook sampling, but it's just going to be me reading the first 10 or so pages of this novella for you next week. So keep an eye out for that. And I'm going to stop recording here because I have about two minutes left on the timer and I don't want the timer alarm to go off during this recording. So thank you all so much for listening. Everything that I talked about from the book Fushishi to resources and everything will be in my email newsletter. Head to kelseydcrawford.com to sign up for that, or you can just check out the link in the description. And be sure to subscribe if you would like to hear the first 10 or so pages of my upcoming book. Thank you so much for listening. You are awesome. <laughs>